thank you very much for logging in. Today's topic is the leadership mindset, and it will be brought to us by no other but than Dr. James Wanjagi, who will take us through this journey on how to have a leadership mindset. So just to start off, we want to look at the program. So the program starts with housekeeping. Our housekeeping is to request all of you to mute your uh, mouses, I mean, uh, your speakers. So thereafter, we will have uh, the introduction of a speaker, which will be brought by Boribin Degwa, the ED and CEO of the Kenya Institute of Management. And then our keynote address will be brought to us by Dr. James Wanjagi. And then we will have Q&A uh, Q session. And thereafter, we will have closing remarks. And uh, with that, I wish to welcome Moritin Degwa to come and give us a welcome note. Thank you very much, Phyllis. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this session once again. And uh, it's good to have you all on board. And as Phyllis said, it was also very good to see the speaker having logged in quite early. We always like to start three on the dot, and uh, certainly we have done that over the last couple of days. Um, what we understand with the leadership mindset is that uh, disruptive, stressful experiences are often opportunities for growth. Indeed, it says that having a leadership mindset means seeing problems as opportunities and recognizing that every challenge provides an opportunity to learn and grow. Research also has shown that a crisis can help, the, can help lift the if it ain't broken, don't fix it mentality or mantra. And this mantra pervades many organizations, including even in our homes, create, creating new opportunities for people to voice their ideas on how to do things better. Because we are told that learning is a continuous process, is a continuous journey, and every day is a learning experience. As teams are forced to take on new challenges, face new uncertainties, and recover from mistakes in the COVID-19 era, they begin to internalize that both their own abilities and those of their peers are not fixed, but rather they can be developed. It's a continuous process. So this growth mindset, as we see, can serve us and our teams well during this crisis. This crisis is also a good, a good time to encourage your teams to assess and improve established practices. For example, online working is significantly less forgiving of coordination and leadership failures. So it's a great opportunity for involving others in, in, in implementing immediate corrections. This might involve, in our view, starting meetings by communicating what you know, indicating perhaps that much is still unknown, and inviting teammates to share not only their knowledge, but also their concerns and questions, because nobody has a monopoly of knowledge. By getting things out on the table, more issues, in our view, can get addressed. And therefore, today we are very pleased to have Dr. Wanjagi, who is to come and tell us or deconstruct or help us help us to deconstruct the concept or the understanding of the leadership mindset. Having said that, let me end with a quote, and this is by none other than the late Martin Luther King Jr., who said, and I quote, the ultimate measure of a man, and I believe it's man or woman, is not where he stands in moments of comfort but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy, end of quote. The topic is the leadership mindset, and the speaker is Dr. James K. Wanjagi. His profile is that he's a certified change management and project management professional. Dr. James K. Wanjagi holds a PhD degree in organizational management, specializing in leadership from Capella University School of Business in Minneapolis, uh, USA. He's a seasoned senior level executive Certified Project Management Professional, PMP, PMI USA. He's also a Certified Change Management Professional, CCM, CCMP, and ProSky USA. He's also a trained executive coach, strategist guru, and IT, and FinTech technology expert with over 18 years extensive marketplace experience, both locally and internationally, with leading organizations delivering business results. Dr. Wanjagi has also taught full-time at Strathmore Business School, and he continues to teach on a part-time basis both executive leadership programs, that, in, that, that is in change management, strategy and competitiveness, in IT, project management, digital and governance. And he also teaches MBA in NIS, HMIS, and organizational behavior. Ladies and gentlemen, let's please warmly welcome 
Dr. Wanjagi to talk to us about the leadership mindset. And as you always say, when everything is okay, please give us a thumbs up. If there's a challenge, give us a thumbs down and we'll, we'll see how we can endeavor to rectify whatever challenge there may be. Thank you very much. Thank you, Moravi. Thank you, Kenya Institute of Management. What an honor for me to come and uh, just share some of my thoughts around this, um, this uh, title, uh, The Leadership Mindset. Uh, you know, Moravi, when you started reading my bio, I started wondering whether that was me. And uh, because it seems like uh, God has been good to me, but I just wanted to frame the conversation around um, uh, the leadership mindset. And the reason that it's important for us, and I'll share my screen shortly. The reason that it's important for us to discuss this, um, as Moravi has begun um, even mentioning, is the times that we are living in. And in those times, what it means for us as practitioners, uh, as leaders, um, as different people in, 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 um, in the society, what it means for us to have a leadership, uh, a leadership mindset. And I think the first challenge that we must address is uh, trying to, and I like the word uh, uh, Mr. Moridi used, this, deconstruct leadership. The challenge with defining leadership is that every person defines leadership a lot based on where they are, what they see. Um, you find leaderships that are definitions that are based on uh, traits, character that is based on, there's the common conversation that has been leadership is whether you're born with leadership or whether leadership is made. You find organizations discussing leadership from an organizational uh, uh, perspective. Uh, and my screen helps you really understand that there is a lot that has been written on leadership. Uh, and because that's the preamble for the mindset, you find that um, Google has humongous results around leader or leadership. Uh, Amazon has over 60,000 books that have been written on, on leadership. And if you go to Wikipedia, there's a bunch of theories that you find, um, 11 different types of leaders. You have leadership types out there, six leadership myths that have been defined. When I was doing my, my PhD focusing on leadership, uh, one of the things that uh, our professors kept telling us is that don't get bogged down by uh, the definitions of leadership, because as generations change, the leadership de de uh, definition will and must change uh, with the change in times and uh, with a different way of doing things that we are exposing ourselves to. So I, I wanted as a preamble to share only three characteristics that I believe, regardless of how you define leadership, that must be present in a leader. One is that a leader must have followers. So there's the idea of strategic followership. And there's a number of books that have been written that really define the concept and, and break it down and say that for you to be a leader, you must have people who follow you. And for people to follow you, they must trust you. So, so However you define leadership, as we get into the mindset of, leadership, of leaders, there has to be an aspect of followership. There also has to be an aspect of influence. And you will find uh, Maxwell's, uh, John C. Maxwell's definition uh, talks about leadership, uh, a number of definitions uh, in some of the management books and leadership books out there really espouse the idea of influence and what influence does is that it then translates into the third characteristic which in my opinion is that yes you must have followers yes you must have influence but thirdly you must have the ability to have those people follow you or action to move at uh, action whether it's people moving whether it's organizations actioning so there has to be an element of of action so regardless of how you define leadership, um, my 
I posit three things, followership, influence, and action. Now, here's a fact um, that, that was quite interesting as I did some research on this. Organizations are spending a lot of money on building leadership development and growth efforts. But research shows that the effectiveness of some of these leadership programs has not been to, uh, at par or may not be providing the ROI that organizations are looking for. And so Brandon uh, Hall's research says that the one thing that seems to be missing in these leadership development programs is the mindset of the leader. So how do leaders think, how do they learn, and how do they behave? And that if we can nail down some of those attributes of the mindset of a leader, then perhaps the growth of leaders will be enhanced significantly, reminding ourselves that the, 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 the characteristics of followership, the characteristics of action, um, and the, the characteristic of influence forms part of that conversation. So there's a great book by Joe Calloway. Um, if you love reading books like I do, this is a great book to read. It's called The Leadership uh, Mindset, and it really describes how today's successive, successful business leaders uh, think. There's another book by a lady called Carol Dweck, and she talks about the new psychology of success and I'm glad Mr. Moridi brought up the idea of COVID and post-COVID era, because as we begin to reimagine, redefine, reinvent, rebuild ourselves post this, this uh, pandemic, there has to be a thought process around our mindsets and how we think and how they influence how we do business, both individually and within organizations. And this is around, and Bill Gates' famous quote really speaks towards that, that believes about our capabilities exact tremendous influence on the paths that we take in life. So what we believe, which forms here many times the, 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 this mindset of our, our leadership, will define what path we take in our lives. And one of the perhaps most insightful definitions of the leadership mindset that I've found out there is that it is the mental lens that dictates what information we take in, how we use that information, how we make sense of that information, and then how we navigate the situations we, we, we encounter. So thinking about situation leadership as one of the many definitions of, of leadership, then the situations we encounter how we respond to them is based on the mental lenses that we dictate, that dictate the information that we, we take in and how we use that information. And then simply defined and put is that mindsets drive what leaders do and why. Okay? In the book uh, by, uh, by um, Carol, she talks about two major mindsets. And, and uh, Anthony uh, Robbins actually discusses this in a majority of, of his peak performance uh, discussions. He, he says, 80% of success is due to psychology, mindset, and only 20% is due to strategy, the specific steps needed to accomplish a result. So if we can st start by building the correct, the right mindset around leadership, our strategies will have the impact that we are looking for. And Kara discusses at length, very great book around growth mindset and fixed mindset. And you can see the, the mindsets and some of the things that are encompassed in that mindset. So if you're building a growth mindset, as uh, Mr. Moridi started by saying, it becomes an opportunity for you to grow you start looking at opportunities as growth opportunities and not as opportunities of failure, of your abilities. You start imagining that you can learn anything that you want to learn. 
the book, uh, um, the book I think it's, meant, it's called uh, Outlier, discusses 10,000 hours that can make you an expert in anything. And so you say, I can learn anything. I can, I can focus my mind and I can do anything that I need, I need to do. And then the attitude will determine your abilities, okay? Um, John C. Maxwell has a great book that says, altitude, your attitude determines your altitude. And this is saying around the same thing, the efforts and attitudes that you put at work and at your organizations determine the kind of your abilities. Challenges help you grow. So what challenges are you going through right now? Those challenges are meant to help you grow. And, you know, I like to try new things. I'm inspired by the success of others, and which is interesting because oftentimes when people succeed, you find that people are not inspired by that. But success of other people should inspire you. Um, T.D. Jakes has a very uh, famous uh, uh, um, statement that says that if someone else can do it, it is proof positive that I can do it as well. So when people succeed, that should inspire you to succeed uh, as well. So that sits around the growth mindset. And ideally, as part of our leadership mindset, we should be building our growth mindset and then doing away with a fixed mindset. The fixed mindset really discusses failure is the limit of my abilities, which is not true, and that you can rise to the level of your incompetence, which is based on a, the Peter principle. But ideally that, no, failure is not the limit of your abilities. You keep trying. There's a great book called Failing Four that discusses that the difference between people who succeed and who fail is what they do when they fail. Uh, so in the fixed mindset, you are either good at what you do or you're not. And that's not necessarily true. You can keep trying and become better at anything you put your, uh, 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 your uh, hands to. Fixed mindset talks about when I'm frustrated, I give up. I only stick to what I know. Therefore, I do not want to challenge the status quo. Feedback and criticism are personal. Taking feedback and criticism are personal. So you, you, you can see how your mindset will define how successful you are in the things that you're planning to do, whether it's an organization or an individual. And that if you, if you, if you um, want to define yourself to, by the fixed mindset, you'll spend a lot of time looking backwards instead of looking, uh, looking into the future. I love Barack Obama's quote uh, that our destiny is not written for us, but it's written by us. And what it reminds me is that regardless of where I am today, and regardless of where we are today, that there's a way we can build what we have to make it better, using the growth mindset, which is part of uh, a leadership mindset. So here are some of, some of the tenets, if you will, of uh, leadership uh, mindset. One is believe. You must believe in yourself and you must believe in your ability. Sounds cliche. But it's a lot of times the reason that we do not move things forward is that we do not believe in our uh, ability to succeed. But leaders who are successful believe in themselves, believe in their ability to succeed, believe in their businesses and what product they're selling, they believe and they understand that the power of belief helps determine what they do or will not do. What they will notice, what they will not notice, the actions they will take or not. So a key element of your leadership mindset, of my leadership mindset, begins with the belief in myself. Imagine with me all the great uh, leaders that we have. Um, if you listen to even sports, and, and I love people like Lewis Hamilton, um, I love um, people like Tiger, Tiger Woods, and if you listen to a lot of their conversations, it starts with, I believed in myself. I believed in the abilities that I had been given by God, and then I believe that I can do, I can do these things. The second one is focus, okay? And sometimes I go all over the place, so uh, don't mind me, I have information that I've picked from different places because I really wanted us to understand how this leadership mindset impacts um, the things that we do. But the second one is the leadership mindset. So one of the key traits of a successful mindset is the ability to direct your focus, your time, your energy, 
and attention towards what will help build you, your business, your teams, and then mitigate the things that hold you back. So as we come out of this post-COVID, you have, a lot of people are saying, how do I rebuild my business? How do I get back into the learning space? How do I get back uh, in school at team? How do I get my degree? How do I... Focus on the things that you want to do. So the question I would ask is, how many times do you write your own personal strategic plan and you stick to it that has actions, that has a SWOT analysis of who you are and what you're capable of? Because when you focus on those things, whether it's your self-organizations, um, you will be able to have um, a laser focus on three things. One, look for opportunities where other people see obstacles. Okay. If people are looking at seeing obstacles, what are you seeing? Are you seeing opportunity? Two, focus with laser-like precision on the goal you seek to accomplish. Don't let negative advice and others deter you. What are you looking to accomplish? Have you written it down? Okay, so we are in November. November, December, I want to accomplish A, B, C, D. Have you documented that? And if you've documented that, what actions are you going to take? I'm, I'm working with an organization currently to develop their leadership program. And when I asked them to put together a leadership plan, um, some of the leaders were very vague, and I was telling them, no, the only way you're going to focus on something is being very specific. If you say that you're not good at delegating, the question is, what are you not delegating? And how are you going to start delegating tomorrow? so that your focus is laser-like and it's very specific. The third thing is manage risk and overcome fear by controlling your focus. So risk is part of, of, of any great adventure that you undertake. If you learn how to manage risk, note, note it says manage because there are different levels. There's mitigating, there is sharing, there is, uh, there is accepting, okay? So learn how to manage risk. Identify the risks that will stop you from achieving your leadership goals, and then learn how, how to manage them, okay? We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. This was written many years ago by Aristotle. And so the question I have is this, what do you repeatedly do? Because we are what we repeatedly do. And if you're going to build excellence in anything that you have put and set your mind to, you must repeatedly do it and do it well. Um, the first time that Tiger Woods was interviewed, he said that he started playing at four years old and kept hitting and hitting the ball until he became the best golfer in the world. He repeatedly practiced how to play golf. If you look at all the great men, look at um, uh, this man, Phillips, the guy who was one of the best swimmers in the world, they keep saying the same thing, repeatedly practicing what I want to become in life. So my mindset is clear, I believe in myself, and I repeatedly do what I need to do. Do it enough times where I become the best at it. Attitude. Leadership requires specific emotional and mental traits that can be grouped under the term attitude. The attitude people bring to work, to a conversation, to an interaction, to an engagement determines whether they are suited for leadership or not. But according to research, the most successful leaders share a couple of uh, traits and attitude, attitudinal traits, courage, persistence, adaptability, curiosity, collaboration, future focus, self-fulfillment, the desire to learn, and the willingness to take action. In the, in the past couple of years, we've seen the shift from IQ, intellectual uh, intelligence of uh, quotient to EQ, emotional, 
which um, uh, Kenya Institute of Management is offering, emotional intelligence, and now to something being called AQ, adaptability quotient. And all of these are part of our growth pattern. But e EQ, if you start at EQ, is where we talk about how self-aware are we and how well can we self or do we self-manage ourselves. The other two quadrants talk about how socially aware are you and how well do you manage the relationship, your relationships? Because that's a key part of being a leader. The adaptability quotient is smack in the middle of Carol's book, The Leadership uh, uh, Mindset, that discusses growth, that says every opportunity should be a growth opportunity, that you should not look at, 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 at challenges, but you should look at challenges as opportunities for growth and that you should be able to adapt to any circumstances, situations, and opportunities as they present themselves. And we've seen organizations post during the COVID uh, pandemic that adapted their organization, pivoted their business model, changed their business uh, model to adapt to the situation and to the environmental conditions that they found themselves in. So these are some of the things that we must think about. Am I future focused? Am I thinking about uh, tomorrow? Am I thinking about sustainability? SMEs, there's a lot of research around SMEs and there's a conversation around that a lot of SME organizations do not last the fourth generation. And when they do, it's 12%. Only 12% uh, make it to the fourth generation. Why? Because there's no future focus. So your leadership uh, 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 mindset, as you're building, yourself, you're building your organizations, you're building your business, you're building your SME businesses. Is my business sustainable? Is it, will it last me a number of, uh, or will it last a number of generations? We'll talk about um, desire to learn shortly, and then the willingness to take action. Oftentimes there's a conversation around, uh, you'd better make a, a, a poor decision and take action on it that never make a decision and do this paralysis by analysis business. Take action. Learn from the actions, the actions that you take. That is what builds uh, great leaders. Mr. Moridi talked about a crisis. And one of the things that we must think through crisis is what happens to when crisis hits? What happens when we are living through a pandemic? What happens when we are coming out of this pandemic? And it is at that crucial point that you're either fighting or fleeing. So fight or flee becomes your mantra. And you're either going to run away from your problem or fully immerse yourself in it and grow. Because then as a resilient leader, you have the ability to sustain your energies under pressure. Hope with disruptive changes and they're here as we as an, an adapt to bounce back from whatever kind of setbacks that we're finding ourselves in high performing leaders with a leadership mindset must cultivate that order or that ability to advance and thrive because the more we uh, uh, cultivate this ability the more we begin to grow because we, remember, growth is part of, of, um, of the leadership mindset. Okay. So the future fast leadership mindset, and I thought I'd put this here, is more of the macro. How do we prioritize and, and, and invest in innovation, infrastructure, whether it's in healthcare, education, human capital, uh, technology, because this will be the future for us. Uh, Kim, one of the things we, the, 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 that they are looking to do is to rebuild how they address some of these things, healthcare, capital, uh, human capital, education, because for us to build future econ uh, jobs and economic growth and a resilient Kenya, we also as individuals must have a future for our fast leadership focus. Because difficult roads lead to beautiful destination. And I cannot overemphasize how when we are in challenging times, it is the opportunity for us to really 
grow as individuals, organizations, and, um, and, 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 uh, and SMEs as well. So leadership by association. Who do you associate yourself with? And everybody probably knows this mantra. Your network is your network, OK? But I want to take that a step further. Having a good network is not enough. How do you value your network? If you don't value them, cultivate them, nurture them, they become worthless. You have a good Rolodex of four numbers, but how are you using them to build yourself? Yeah. I have an interesting book um, that I'm reading called You Do Not Eat Alone. And it is talking about a gentleman who built a very successful business purely by networks and putting value on each network and looking for ways to support his network so that then they can support him in his business. So when you value your network, it becomes priceless. When you know people, don't just know them, but learn what they do, help them along their journey. And when your time comes, they help you along your journey. Go for, go for, for forums where you meet people. Um, I'm encouraging in the leadership development program that I'm currently doing, I've encouraged every single person to take at least one business card a month, but not just take the business card. In the next month to interact with the person, okay? These are basic things, but they're important for us because it helps you build, build your network. Let people see you on professional network sites like LinkedIn. How often are you posting on professional LinkedIn networks like um, LinkedIn? Are you on LinkedIn? Do you have a static page or do you have a dynamic page? Okay. If you do not build your leadership by association, your networking components, then what you have is, is, is valueless, but it's priceless when you're building. If you go to my LinkedIn network, and I haven't been able to do a lot this year, but I would try to post an article every two to three weeks. And at that time, I was in the fintech space. And out of that, I became a fintech advisor for a lot of organizations who just wanted to sit down and talk. And, and you know, they pay you as, as much as 25000 an hour just to sit and talk. But it's because they thought I was a thought leader in that area. Build your network and let the value come out of your network. And one of the best forums is LinkedIn, okay? So have you ever had, when growing up, be, be careful who you are around? It's true, because you're guilty by association. Successful entrepreneurs, successful leaders understand that there's also success by, uh, by association. All successful people have had a mentor, a friend, a business, uh, associate someone who's helped them quicken their career growth. And my encouragement is that your mindset is about networking with people who build your net worth. The power of intentionality. Growth does not just happen. Growth is intentionally looked for. It is in intentionally sought. And so you never lose your why, okay? Because the majority of your life is lived in between significant events and milestones, not in them, okay? You must develop your why. Why are you really doing what you do, okay? And then the giving back aspect is key. Whose life can I positively impact, okay? You've had the adage that you've never, no one grows poor by giving. That also is in our leadership in our entrepreneur, in our business, in our organizational arena. Give back what you learn, give it back. Use opportunities to be intentional about giving back what you've learned. And remembering that nothing just happens. You must build an intentional growth pattern. And um, that law of intentionality is very, is very important for, for our lives. Procrastination is one of the, so I do a lot of executive coaching and there are two forms of executive coaching. There is transactional coaching and there's transformational. Transactional is about the transactions that we do day to day. Transformation is around how do I move myself and the potential that I believe I have to this great place. 
60 to 70 percent of my transactional coaching conversations are about the idea of procrastination and there's an issue there because then if you're not intentional then you will procrastinate so thinking about that is saying you're very intentional about doing certain things if it's to go to school you want to go get a degree um, at MUA, go get a degree if you want to go get a diploma or a certificate at Kim, go get it. Be intentional about it. Plan and make your, your, your plans, uh, take action on your plans. One of the uh, mindsets that I am passionate about is learning. And um, I wish I showed you my office, but in my office, I, I have this all around the office that says learning is not attained by chance. It must be sought after with other and attended to with diligence, Abigail Adams. And what she's saying is that you must intentionally look for learning opportunities. You cannot build your social capital, your knowledge capital, your reputational capital if you are not learning. And this is not so much only formal learning. There's also informal learning, okay? Learning from the stories that are told, storytelling. Uh, learning for for um, learning from all different opportunities that you can learn, but you must purpose to learn. Okay, and one way of learning is um, the questions that I've that, that I've asked here. How much more successful would you be if you started a company with uh, with uh, with Bill Gates? Did you know that he reads about fifty books a year? How much more, or how much? well would you have if Warren Buffett was teaching you the stock market? He has built a $40 billion company. He says he reads about 600 pages daily, or he used to read 600 pages daily when he began his career as an investor. Okay? Elon Musk's uh, penchant for reading helped him build a rocket, and it helped Tony Robbins uh, figure out how to build a better life. 90% of Tony Robbins' conversations are around uh, being the better you. Uh, do you know that a lot of the books that he read were people like Dale Carnegie, some of the old books around um, how well you communicate, how you can do um, build a better life. So that mindset of learning is very key. If you learn to learn, uh, if you love to learn, it, it makes the difference between a learning versus a performance mindset. Oftentimes, we are geared towards performance, and performance has its place, nothing wrong with that. But we must spend time learning, because you, you perform on what you learn. The input drives your performance. And if you have a learning, learning uh, mindset, you're mentally primed to increase your competence, and get in deep level st uh, learning uh, strategies, seek out feedback, exact a lot more effort and you are persistent adaptable willing to cooperate and you tend to perform at a, at a higher level this is based on a hbr uh, article that was written in january 2020 and you can go read it it says to be a great reader a leader you need the right mindset so you can see a learning mentality is important so when, when, I'm, when I'm talking to, um, to MBA students and executive education leaders, they say, but we don't have time. How am I going to learn in between work, in between commuting home, in between family, in between other activities? And so I start by asking a couple of questions. How many times do you watch uh, uh, YouTube videos that are posted on WhatsApp by your friends in the different forum, forums you have? Okay. And if you look at WhatsApp now has the ability to show you in a month where you spend most of your time. But imagine with me that on that commute, you learned and you listened to a podcast. You listened to a TED talk. You listened to a YouTube video that was teaching you something. Now, does it work? Yes, it does. I, while I was living and working outside the country, an organization, and, um, the, uh, it's called um, Anadako, Consul uh, Anadako Petroleum, did a complete review of all their organizational structure, uh, 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 organizational employees, 
And I wanted to do a test to find where people are in terms of capability. What was interesting was that a lady who was an admin assistant scored higher than two of her senior managers. And the question was asked was why? What makes, what is it that you're doing differently? And she said she had a two hour commute between from home, one way two hours uh, and back way two hours. And in those two hours from Monday to Friday, all she did was listen to podcasts. All she did was listen to something that helped her grow. Fridays and over the weekend, she listened to whatever she wanted to, but between Monday to Friday, she listened to things that helped her grow. And it was the demonstration of her learning was in the assessments that they did. So learning versus performance. Performance is great and it has its place. Learning helps you perform better. Deliberative and implemental mindsets. Leaders with implemental mindsets, as the name suggests, are more focused on implementing decisions. Again, it has its place. And, but it closes you off to new ideas and different information. Leaders who build a deliberative mindset make better decisions because they're more impartial, they're more accurate, they're less biased in their processing because they're making deliberate decisions uh, as opposed to be just implementers. So I want to ask you, are you a deliberator or are you an implementer? Do you take time to build problem solving, deliberately build a, pro a problem solving model framework for your decision making? Or are you the person who implements what has been agreed by people? And your mindset must shift towards being very deliberative in the decisions that you make, how you make them, and using models that have been effective over a period of of time. Of course, uh, a healthy lifestyle is key. Exercise and jog helps you with your mindset, not just leadership, but generally, um, um, especially in these times um, that we've been confined for long periods of time. I absolutely believe that family is a key aspect of building a strong, healthy mindset. You, the, the, you're surrounding yourself with family that is both supportive, but also that, um, that is, is excited about the many things that you're doing and uh, they should always be your number one fan as you grow um, your leadership mindset. You are what you listen to and yes, you are what you watch. So I encourage you every Sunday to look at your uh, report. I know that Android is doing this and I know that iOS is doing this, on how much time you spend on your social, that means on WhatsApp and other forums, and on productivity, and begin shifting that. When I saw mine, I was surprised. I tended to spend a lot of time on WhatsApp, and I began to change that, shifting that, that to move more to learning something that is productive, as opposed to just uh, watching, and they're great. They're great for downtime, but they're also, you also need to start shifting. How do I build a more leadership mindset in what I am watching and in what I am listening, I'm, I'm listening to, okay? And um, I'm convinced uh, Steve Jobs' quote is perhaps one of the best quotes that says that the thing that separates successful entrepreneurs from your non-successful ones is pure perseverance the kind of perseverance that you and I build in the things that you do, never settling for uh, mediocrity, but settling for excellence. We do, we do not come, or we did not come to fear the future, we came here to shape it. Future focus as a leadership mindset is saying, how do I shape the future? What am I doing as a leader, as a manager, as a businessman, as an organization, as an institution to shape the future. What part am I playing in shaping the future? And Barack Obama uh, speaks passionately about how the future is ours. And what we do in the future will determine what generations post this will uh, get or receive uh, from us. Okay. Uh, of course, as I begin to wind out my conversation, for a man, for as a man thinketh, so he is. One of the best quotes that you can ever think about, and it's not a quote; it's a living, it's a living uh, conversation. 
What you think defines or determines ultimately who you are. If you think negatively, your mindset is going to be negative and therefore what you build is going to be negative. If you think positive, half empty versus half full, it will define your life and your success in life. Okay. And so there's a very good question from Peter that I'll, 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 I'll answer shortly. Uh, but for as a man thinker, in his heart, so he is. So, so what? I've given you this, this 20, 30 minutes of, of great information. Hopefully great uh, from your end. But so what? It means that if you give yourself 30 days to clean your home, it will take you 30 days. If you give yourself three, year, uh, three hours, it will take you three hours. So your goals, your ambitions, your potential, your leadership development growth, whatever it is that you're seeking to do, start it now. And build an agency around it. Yes, it's a lifelong learning journey. In fact, most effective methods talk about the 70, 20, 10, approach or rule. 70% is on the job, what you do on the job, what you learn on the job. 20% is support and feedback from other leaders, people who demonstrated the skills that you're looking for. But 10% is your learning. What Kim, um, Kenya Institute of Management is doing. Opportunities for formal learning, seminars, reading, webinars, the things that help you grow as a person because they directly influence your 70 and your 20. They directly influence your, uh, your 90, your 90%. And I will now invite um, questions. Uh, Peter Kitonio has asked, what is the place of religion in the <laughs> mindset of an effective leader? Um, it's an excellent question. Um, yes. Your faith is a key anchor, regardless of the faith that you espouse. It's a key anchor. We were born into different faiths and, and we practice different religions. Those are the anchors that we built our leadership, our success, our mindsets upon. So, I'm a, I'm a Christian. My anchor and beliefs are based on the Christian faith. So I know that certain things like the last quote from God that I shared is one of the anchors that builds who I am as a man thinker, so he is. So whatever practice, whatever place we find ourselves and religion that we espouse to, it must be part of building our leadership or our mindsets for growth. It cannot be retrogressive, it cannot be negative. It has to be something that aspires us, that gives us inspiration to be better than we are and to live our world better than we, than we found it. Um, thank you. And a, a comment from Tom Munguru who says, excellent leadership insights from this uh, Daktari. I like the adaptability conscious, AQ and well-researched references, customized to practical leadership application, kudos. And then mm -hmm. he talks about the law of intentionality. Growth mm -hmm. is a cropped up process, not spontaneous. And you've mm -hmm. urged us to always find our why. Okay, Gabriel Okumu, I hear you. And yes, this time we have the presentation. So with the permission of uh, Dr. James Wanjagi, we'll be able to share the Absolutely. presentation as well. Absolutely. And then uh, David Bongangi says it's, it's a very interesting presentation. It was indeed transformative. How do you feel when people say that? This is true. It is transformative. So thank you very much, Dr. Wanjagi. Thank you. Thank you. And, and uh, Peter Kitoni goes ahead and makes a comment. Having a supportive family is, very criti is a very critical component of successful leadership. Suppose one does not have one. Uh -huh. This is a question. Just suppose one does not have one. What should he or do she or he do to navigate the negative energies from impacting on their effectiveness as a leader? So I will allow you to talk about the effect of family. Yeah. That's a very good question. So 
and the way I'd frame that is that suppose one has a family that is not supportive or suppose one has a family that is not around to support them, what should they do? We've often de defined family as the people we love and care for that are around us. That is one definition. Perhaps a, another definition to see is that the friends that are close to you that help you in your growth over a period of time become your family. So family is not uh, my wife, uh, my, my children, my brother, my sister only. It is also the people that I build around me because you are who you stick around or you are around me. Okay. And there are many leaders, I mean, there are very many books that I've talked about over a period of time. The people that you build around you will help you build your successful leadership mindset. Let me give you an example. Um, when, I, when I teach uh, about leadership, I talk about that every person might have, might, needs to have about five to six people in their lives. You need to have someone who criticizes you and you're willing to take uh, positive criticism. You need to have one person who's your number one fan. Whether you do anything right or wrong, that person is telling you you are the best thing since sliced bread or cheese. Okay? You need to have someone who helps you define the trees and the forest. Okay? And as we grow older, people my age need to have a reverse mentor. A reverse mentor is a young person who understands technology more than you? Who helps you with your technology challenges to build them? So if you don't have someone who's finding you, if you don't have someone who's giving you constructive criticism, if you don't have someone who helps you understand the trees and the forest so that you know what to focus on, and someone who can help you because technology isn't going anywhere, then, uh, then as you try to build yourself, there's going to be some, some limitations. But that then forms part of your family. It forms part of the support structure that you need to build uh, a strong leadership mindset. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And maybe I can add by saying family, you, uh, we spend so many hours in the office place. So even the people we work with, they become our family. And mm -hmm. thank you so much for even breaking it down that we need to have a person who gives us positive criticism, a cheer giver, one who is able to demystify the trees from forests and a reverse mentor. Thank you so very much. And I will go into the messages which were picked when people were logging in. Um, addressing leadership din dynamics, how do we address the leadership dynamics during COVID-19? period and maybe i'll combine it with something else because it's it's not as clear so the first question is how do we address leadership dynamics during the covid 19 pandemic period and the second question is what leadership strategies can kenyans apply to salvage our fallen businesses you have mentioned a bit of it but go ahead yeah. and just respond to us yeah so uh, uh, this that would that takes um I've done a 45 presentation 45 minute presentation on this so let me try and summarize some of the things that we that we can do both from a strategic perspective but also to salvage uh, number one i start by talking about and, and and for me it's important that we start with the mindset so in some of my articles i talk about the entrepreneur mindset meaning that you first have to build yourself because when you build yourself all these other things that you're trying to do will be faced will be based on the right mindset so there is the entrepreneur mindset and a lot of the discussions we've had here are built around that secondly we must take a critical look at our businesses my business model must be relooked at my business strategies how my customers how i was growing uh, the business customer growth uh, operating uh, cash flow, so the finances, the strategy, the in investment, the people that I was working and using uh, to grow my business. I must really look at them and ask myself, are they fit for the future? Okay. And if they are good, if they're not, 
what do I need to do? Do I need to reskill? Do I need to re uh, re, re, re look at my business model? And if I need to look at my business model, exactly what am I looking at my business model? And the one answer that I keep telling people is that technology, the one thing that has remained constant during the pre, during and post COVID era that you're going to see the new normal is how we use technology. There is the, uh, there is the, if you look at what did well from a numbers and from a revenue perspective and from a growth was anything that was driven by technology. The reason that we are sitting in this forum and this meeting room uh, virtually is because of technology. So the future of my business has to be centered or has to have a huge portion that sits around technology. So as a businessman, as a business organization, as an SME, how do I incorporate technology? I'm working with a number of organizations currently because they want to review their strategy to incorporate uh, technology as a key component. So that the pillars of your business now include technology as an enabler. Okay? So, so even as we're doing those things, individually we must also be building ourselves. Um, I can't tell you how much Coursera, Udemy, every online program out there has grown by 30 to 60%. Why? Because people are now building their own leadership capabilities. People are now going back to school. People are now reinventing themselves. The jobs for today are not the jobs for tomorrow. If you look at the future of work, if you read the book, called the, there's a great article called The Fourth Industrial Revolution. And there's some articles around the future of work. Tomorrow's work is going to be very different. Automation is going to be the game. So if you are in an, op, an, a, a, an organization, a position where automation is going to take over what you do, we must begin reinventing ourselves today. Asking yourself, what skills are going to remain in 10 years from now? I went and visited, um, I went to China about in 2014. And in China, they identify what is going to happen 10 years from now. They take their, their, their teachers and their faculty to the US to learn, and then they bring back that information to China. This is why they are ahead. I want to challenge uh, Kenya Institute of Management, and I want to challenge more. When did you last change your curriculum to fit the changing times? Because we need to be future focused. Um, Phyllis, we're talking about this. We should be talking about social networking, social media engagement, social messaging. Um, I'm glad you guys are already on the uh, emotional intelligence as part of the new learning. So, so, so in, in a nutshell, re-look at your business, re-look at your capabilities, build an entrepreneurship uh, uh, mindset, uh, re-look at things like uh, where am I going to get financing and, and, uh, and cash flow to continue running my business or to bring my business back to life, and then make decisions. Make those decisions that are going to rebuild yourself and your business. Wow, thank you so much because uh, for telling us and drilling in about our mindset. And earlier on in your presentation, you said, as a man thinketh, so he is. And here you've reminded us in this screen, we need to breathe. That means you need to relax. So mm -hmm. Tabunguru has a question on chat, and he's asking, where does a leader draw the line between triviality and objectivity in leadership, decision making, without being or seeming very petty? <coughs> triviality and objective decision making. So I'll give you my experience, and because I'm sitting amongst learned friends, I want also people to share their experiences. But let me tell you how I I see that. It comes down to the art of delegation. And it comes down to the confidence that the question that you have given is going to do what you want them to do. The best leaders are the transformational leaders that always have a hint of transactional, meaning that you cannot completely remove yourself from the day-to-day -day activities. And that um, being objective means that you have given the right direction, you have given clear, uh, clear expectations, there is a solving mechanism that exists within the organization, and then you leave your people to do their job. Steve Jobs said it very well. He said, don't hire experts and then tell them what to do. 
you might, you might as well have done it yourself. So um, I, I would say that it's, it's, it's a learning process that knowing what's trivial and what's, uh, what's objective and knowing what to release in terms of delegation and what to focus on. In crisis moments like this, I would be a very hands-on leader because I need to bring back business back to life. That means I might make and get involved in decisions that seem tribal uh, and, and, seem, and seem that I should not get involved in. But as my business begins to grow and get into its self-automation mode, then I start giving people the ability to make those decisions. How are you going to grow great leaders? You're going to grow them by giving people the opportunity to, to make decisions and sometimes fail in those decisions. Failing by, failing by doing. And I'm not sure that completely answered the question for the gentleman, but I want, I, I, you have to get to a place where you can define the, the clear line between the two of them and allow people to build your business for you, allow yourself not to get involved in some decision, in, in some triviality that doesn't, I mean, you're sitting in a conversation and you're talking about things that you should not be talking about. Am I building, and perhaps the, the litmus test, test is this, am I building myself, my organization, and the future in the engagement and interaction I am presently engaged in? If the answer is no, then you don't need to be doing it. Maybe, maybe, perhaps, for someone else. Oh, amazing. There are more questions, Dr. Ari. Don't worry. Today, you're the keynote speaker, and I can see your glass is empty. Please fill it up with more water. 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 So thank you very much. And um, in the chat room, I'm seeing many people asking for the presentation. We have uh, the membership team present. And uh, as long as you've renewed your membership for 2020, you will be getting the presentation. So um, back to Dr. James Wanjagi. Mm -hmm. There are some two questions here, and I can flash back to uh, some conversation you had during your presentation about the capabilities that were done, and the, the assistant had a higher, I'm not sure if it was EQ or AQ, the EQ was higher than the other leaders, Yes. So questions are here. They're asking, why is it that most people have the capability to lead and they don't? Why are most people shy to lead? And then you can combine that with, how do you develop a winning team? So question one is, uh, why are people shy to lead? Um, they have the capability, but they... they they either stand back and let other people do it. And then the second one is how do you develop a winning team, right? So the first one, <laughs> I honestly, mindset. It goes down to your mindset. The, one of my uh, PhD papers was on distributive leadership. And I was, I went to observe um, how people work together. And it's interesting that if today you went and you found an accident on the road, you will suddenly find a doctor taking lead. If you go to a community gathering, you will find that guy who's probably well known and well articulate in the community taking lead. Okay? It may be that people are forced to become leaders by situations, but ultimately, if your mindset is about how do I change the organization, the community, the people where I'm around, you will take up a leadership position. Because remember, in my definition of leadership is about action, uh, 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 followers, and influence. Okay? So distributed leadership talks about sharing leadership in communities, sharing leadership in our workplaces. So the CEO of King is a leader by position, but you will find that he will find opportunities to be a leader by community, by sharing, by building, by influencing change. That's very different by the, than the position. So my encouragement to us is that we have the capabilities Trust yourself, believe in yourself. Remember that you never, 
you succeed by failing. John C. Maxwell's book is a great read for, the, for people like that. It, it, it talks about failing forward. Jack Ma talks about failing forward. Uh, people like Collins Powell talk about failing forward. Uh, there are many people who've talked about failing forward. You fail and you leave, but the difference is that you're trying to do something. So take the step at leading anyway. What's the worst that can happen? The worst is that you learn and that you build. How do you build lead, uh, winning teams? Winning teams are, they know their expectations, very clear expectations. They have a very clear job description. You coach them to perform. Google has a great uh, Harvard Business Review article that talks about how coaching for performance is the number one thing that has made them successful as an organization. Coaching for performance. And then you give them the opportunity with challenges to succeed. Uh, James Moria, the CEO of Centum, came to Strathmore one, um, one fine afternoon, and that very question was asked of him. How do you build winning teams? Because we had prepped him. He came with a young gentleman who was 27 years old, who was the lead project manager uh, at 27 years old, uh, uh, acquiring, procuring, installing, configuring all the elevators and the lifts that you see at Two Rivers Mall. And the gentleman, and please don't, don't, um, don't quote James that you hire people who don't have experience and get them to do these things. But what he said was that he gave this 27 year old person a challenge. Of course, with, with the, uh, with the uh, feedback and coaching, that they had never done this before. And because of the environment of learning and growing that had been built in Centum, this young man, out of his own mouth, was able to demonstrate that he was, he was able to do that. My learning from that conversation was that organizations must create challenges problem-solving projects and challenges within the organization where you get teams to fix the problems within the organization themselves. And the more you do that, you have a winning team. Of course, motivation and great feedback and the right, the right um, compensation mechanisms and reward and recognition play a key part. But if you give people the ability to do and you give them the right direction and you support them as a resource, you build a very winning, a very good winning team. Wow, thank you, thank you, Dr. Uh, James Wanjagi. It seems like we will need to have another session with you very soon. But I'll ask the last question. What entails planning to succeed as a leader? How do you plan to succeed as a leader? You, are, you become intentional about your plan. You put a plan in place and you become intentional about executing it. So I'll ask this question again as, as we begin to close. How many of you have a personal strategic plan? How many of you have a documented leadership development plan? How many of you can at the end of the year tick against everything that they say they will do and they've done? How many of us are building a reading culture. What did you just read? And if you read it, what kind of conversations has it elevated your thinking and your conversation? Okay, your engagements with uh, with with uh, with uh, fellow employees, fellow uh, businessmen, fellow organizational uh, people. What can what level of, uh, of engagement do you have? So, if a you have a plan. B, you're intentional about that plan and you take action on your plan and then you monitor and evaluate yourself consistently. Then you have planned to succeed. If you don't have a plan, we are planning to fail because either way you have a plan. You're either written it and you're doing something about it or you don't have one and you have decided I'm not going to do and achieve the goals that um, I want to achieve. Without further ado, I wish to welcome Moreithi Ndegwa to give us a vote of thanks, especially to our members and our keynote speaker today. Thank you. Welcome, Moradi. Oh, thank you very much, Felis. 
Thank you. Thank you very much um, um, for that uh, excellent discourse. Allow me firstly just to thank all those who logged in today to our great speaker. What would we say? Re uh, reading through the comments, reading through the chat, it is very clear that Dr. Wanjagi has given an excellent discourse. And so to Dr. Wanjagi, we want to say thank you very much for the excellent discourse that you've given us on the leadership mindset. Without further ado, members, I want to say thank you very much on behalf of the management team at KIM. Thank you for staying on until now. We wish you a very, very blessed and good evening. And please remember to observe the Ministry of Health guide guidelines. Be safe and keep well and maintain social distances and all the protocols that we've been, we've been told. And above all, God bless you and have a blessed evening. Thank you very much and good night and bye for now.